Back in 2002, I got this Power Mac dual processor, one gigahertz for each processor. This video is about installing an SSD drive or solid state drive. Let's see if the computer will recognize the drive and better yet, if it will boot from the drive. The latest OS that this computer supports is Leopard or the 10.5.8 version. I got it with one gigabyte of RAM and ATI display card. Back then, ATI was an independent company. Now it belongs to AMD. And this the graphics card have a special connector especially made for Apple. It was called Apple Display Connector. It is like a primitive Thunderbolt connector because this Apple Display Connector carry out the power for the monitor, two USB ports, and also the video signal in just one cable. The two processors from Motorola came in a direct card. Uh, it has four PCI full length PCI slots, one AGP, back then the AGP port was for the graphics, and a 120 gigabytes parallel ATA drive, two optical drives, one super drive and one CD-ROM. The super drive was a, a DVD player and also was capable of burning CDs, I believe. It has a USB 1.1 version uh, with two ports. Also two firewire ports for at 400, a 56K modem, gigabit Ethernet, and also had option for wireless and Bluetooth. It has analog and digital audio out. This computer was so powerful in 2002 that the US government classified this computer as a weapon, so it was prohibited to export to Cuba and some other countries. So it was a nice acquisition. It was a nice computer, too powerful to be a, a personal computer or home computer. As for Pentium PCs, well, they're harmless. A few years later, I started to feel the computer a little bit slow. So I decided to upgrade it with um, serial ATA drives, but this computer has IDA drives, the standard parallel ATA drives. So it didn't have any serial at the ports. So I added a Sonos Tempo Write card. It has two serial ATA ports for two drives and you can make writes for right serial, write one. I also added a USB 2.0 card to speed up the USB since the original ones were, were like a 12 megabits USB. So I'm going to go ahead and try to install a solid state drive in this computer and see how it behaves. And we are going to boot using the spinning disk in order to format the solid state drive then remove the spinning disk and put it back into the Mac once we burn the DVD image for the installation.
booting with the traditional spinning disc took like two and a half minutes to boot. In order to create the boot disc, I'm going to make two partitions into the SSD drive. One will be for the DVD image for the installation and the other one will be for the actual booting disc in the Mac. So once I have the two partitions in the D drive, I'm going to install the DVD image into the first partition to boot from there. And once it boot from the DVD image, I'm going to install from there into the second partition of the computer. I didn't want to boot from the USB because using a pen drive is going to take way more time than using an internal drive. So now I'm putting the SSD drive into the Power Mac. We won't need the second drive, so I'm going to remove this cable. This computer didn't have a serial ATA drive, so there is no serial ATA connector for the power, so I'm going to use an adapter. I won't secure the drive since I'm not planning to use this computer. This is only an experiment, so. Let's turn it on and see if it boots from the SSD drive. I'm speeding up the video because it takes about 25 minutes to, ins to install the OS. It took 21 minutes, it finished. Now let's wait for the intro to finish. Let's respond some questions from the OS. And restart the computer and see how it boots from the SSD drive for the first time. Well, it took one minute and 30 seconds. From that, let's take apart 22 seconds from the open firmware to perform it, its auto test. So it is about one minute and 10 seconds to boot. I'm going to test copying these three gigabyte files from the USB. This is using the USB 2.0 card, not the original 1.1. USB because it would take like uh, two days to copy. Opening a 12 megapixel picture, uh, about 20 megs in size, in color photo paint, it takes uh, a few seconds. It, it is fast enough. I'm not sure what filter to apply in order to test how, how fast there is now. So, well, this video is uh, all about putting the SSD drive into the 2002 computer, so I'm gonna leave it there. I have installed 104 Fox browser since Safari cannot be updated in order to comply with the modern sites. And this 
this browser works really nice. YouTube opens fine. I'm gonna see how it plays a, a video. I'm gonna open an HD video to see if it plays. It is lower in the HD resolution to SD resolution, it's about 360. And even that, the video is not playing very well. If you leave it a few seconds, it's going to catch up with the frame rate, but it is awful to see it like that. Going full screen gets a little bit slower also with the same resolution of the video. Let's try another test. I'm going to open a 4K video running from the SCC drive and see if it opens. Well, it opens, that's a progress. But of course, it struggles to play a fairly good frame rate. Well, we proved that it is possible to install a solid state drive into a 2002 Power Mac. You will see an improvement, but I don't think we can use it as a daily basis as a normal computer. I will leave you with these pictures of the complete disassemble of the computer I performed in order to clean it up. I think I'm going to take apart the power supply and use it as a bench power supply for my experiments. I don't think I can sell this computer to anyone. Uh, it's not even a vintage one or collection computer, so I'm going to just take it apart and take away the power supply to use it in another project. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.